zone in the sport that you love by improving your awareness. She will share with you what it takes to become aware and how that mental skill will benefit you in your sport and in your life. The speech is six to eight minutes. Let's welcome Sue Ann Kern. Sports author Michael Murray, Murphy, you might know of him. He's been credited as saying, there is beauty in sport that lies beyond the uncertainty. There's beauty in sport that lies beyond the uncertainty. And we all love the uncertainty of a game, whether we're players or whether we're spectators, but what we really love is what happens in our minds, in our bodies, in our souls, in our hearts during that game, especially when we're in the zone. But, alas, there's always going to be a plateau that you will reach. And what is your sport? Uh, I boulder. You boulder. My daughter boulders. What about you? What's your sport? Boxing. Boxing? How about you? I run cross country. Have you ever reached a plateau? Definitely. Anybody here never have reached a plateau? Because if you say no, I won't believe you. We all know that sports is as much mental as it is physical. You can have the best physical capabilities, but if your mental attitude's not there, you're not going to win. Likewise, you can have the best mental attitude in the whole wide world, but if your physical capabilities aren't there, then it's not going to make you a winner. It will make you delusional. It will make you delusional. So tennis is my sport. And Lord knows I have reached my share of plateaus. And I take lessons, I hit against the ball machine, I, I go to clinics, I play multiple times a week to try to get past that plateau and get into my zone. And it's not easy. But earlier this summer, I took a three-day course with the sports psychologist, Dr. Kevin Sverdick. And Dr. Sverdick has spent years studying athletes and what it takes to help them develop a mental attitude and to get into their zone, to reach past their plateau. Now, it was a three-day clinic, and I only had six to eight minutes, so I'm only going to be able to touch on a few topics. But I wanted to share with you the number one trait to developing a mental, uh, a winning mental attitude, and that is awareness. Awareness. Now, what is awareness? Awareness is focus. Awareness requires a present-centered focus. It requires us to be able to be present-centered. Now focus, the first component, is made up of directional focus and it's made up of capacity. Directional focus does not mean left, right, up, down, back, forth. What directional focus means is internal and external focus. It is how you develop an intrinsic response to an external stimulus. So for example, let's say my opponent on the tennis court hits a lob. The external stimulus is the ball. Sometimes it's a flock of geese flying overhead. Sometimes it's another court's ball coming onto my court. But I want to focus on that ball. What's that ball doing? Is it spinning? Is it going to go over my head? Is it going to my partner's side of the court? What are my opponents doing? What are, what are they setting up to do? That's the external stimulus. The internal stimulus, the internal response is my thinking. How am I going to handle this? What am I going to do? Do I need to set up for an overhead? Do, do I need to step back? Do I need to duck? That happens a lot more than it should. <laughs> the second component of focus is capacity. Capacity is how broad or how narrow our, our focus needs to be. If your focus is too broad, then you can get distracted. You're looking at too many things. If your focus is too narrow, then you're going to miss some of the external stimulus that's going to affect your play. So let's take an example of a football quarterback. If his focus is too broad and he's looking at that entire field, by the time he recognizes an open receiver, it might be too late. If his focus is too narrow and he's only focusing on one receiver, he may very well miss the perfect opportunity for a completion with another receiver. So you have to make sure 
that your focus is sufficiently broad and sufficiently narrow. One of the things that you must do in order to get that capacity and to get that directional focus is to become present-centered. Present-centered means thinking about right now. One of, my, one of the phrases that I love is, you can't take tomorrow's breath today, and you can't retake yesterday's breath. So how do you become present-centered? The most logical, easiest thing to do is breathe. When you breathe, your body systems slow down, and you come into the moment. So that's the first thing you want to do is breathe. Another way you can become present-centered is to engage in the senses around you. Take a second and close your eyes and listen to the wind rustling through the pine trees at the top of the ski run. Smell that pungent grass of the fresh cut grass on the uh, golf course. Feel that coarse leather, weathered leather on the baseball. Feel it. When my partner and I start a tennis match, we warm up by standing at the, the standing at the, the service line and just gently following the ball back and forth. Don't say a word. We just hit the ball slowly and methodically. And that calms us down and it brings us into the present and it helps us calm our nerves. The third way you can become present centered is routine. How many of you have a routine before you play your sport? What's your routine? Well, we do like a series of warm-ups to get us like ready and then... Your warm-ups, your warm-ups. Do any of you have a lucky charm? Do you jump up and hit the door jam before you go onto the court? How many of you have seen Rafi on the Dow play tennis? <laughs> now that's a routine. He does that before every point, whether he's serving or receiving. So think of a routine to help you calm down. So now you can see how awareness, when you are, awareness helps you calibrate your focus, it helps you become present-centered, but what's that gonna buy you in your sport? There's an acronym, acronym I want you to remember. R-C-A, recognize, commit, and accept. So when you are aware, you are able to notice what's going on around you. You're able, able to notice what's going wrong, what's going right. So recognize that. Recognize what's happening. Recognize when you, when you find a mistake and figure out what you need to do. Did you shank the ball on your drive? Did you throw another gutter ball? Why did that happen and what do you need to do to correct it? Commit. Commit to an action to correct that. Bend your knees. Take a smaller backswing. You have to commit to a singular action because if you commit to multiple actions, it broadens your focus too much and you can get distracted. So it needs to be a singular action such as, I'll choke up on the bat more, not I'm gonna hit a home run. You also can't, you also can't commit to a thought, I'm gonna win the game. That's too broad. So commit to an action. Once you've committed, then accept unconditionally the consequences of your action. Did it work? Did you commit to choking up on the bat? Did it work? Great, do it again. Did it not work? Try something new, try again. So this RCA allows you to recognize what's going on, commit, and then accept and reboot. You have to, be Im you have to improvise when things don't go wrong and try something new. So now that you are aware that awareness is the is the first step in developing a mental attitude. I hope you can all go out there and break through your plateaus and play in the zone.